The sky outside my studio today is a very clear, flat blue. It's uh, no clouds in anywhere. It's just this beautiful, smooth color. So there are times when we want our sky to just be consistently a flat, even blue right across, uh, all the way across. And in watercolor, that can be kind of difficult to make a very smooth passage of fluid color. Uh, we tend to have issues with streaking or blotching or back runs that uh, prevent us from getting that beautiful flat wash. So let's look at some ways to make a better flat wash in our painting. Please be aware that it does take some time and practice. But uh, the more we work at understanding uh, pigment and water ratios, how much water to use and so forth, the better our paintings are going to be. Now we're going to just start by moistening our entire piece of paper. And I'm using a large brush for this. If you're using a small brush, it's going to take longer. And one end might, might start to dry before you get to the other end. So you want to have an even amount of moisture all the way across. That means using a large brush big enough to fill that area quickly. You want to also use good paper. This is uh, Arsh's 140 pound rough. It's absorbing, the, it's absorbing some of the water as I first put it down. So I'm actually going back over it just to make sure that some of the areas that got absorbed quite a lot of water quite quickly are nice and shiny on the surface. And then as I've swept my brush across the paper, um, I have excess moisture that's beaded up around the edge. And I'm gonna lift that moisture right now and remove it. I do not want any of the excess moisture around the edge flowing back into my painting because that's one way of creating back runs. Now for a perfectly beautiful and even wash, I'm going to avoid the dried pigments that are in my palette. And 90% of the time I'm using my pigment squeezed from the tube right into the palette and allowed to dry. But as the pigment uh, ages a little bit, it starts to create little granules and you can see some of these look a little gritty. And those little pigment uh, uh, nuggets, I guess, <laughs> will, uh, will make streaks on your painting. So I want to use very fresh tube paint today. I'm going to just set that aside. And uh, this is Manganese Blue by Core. And I'm going to squeeze a little bit out right onto my uh, plastic right here. I'm using a, uh, this is a corrugated plastic, it's called Coreplast in my area, and I love these for watercolor painting boards. They are light and waterproof and easy to work with, and very portable, and you can cut them to the size that you need. And this is more Coreplast, it's just a white, and this is a transparent. Now I'm not going to use this big brush for applying the blue pigment. I'm going to pick this uh, mop brush which is a Princeton Neptune number no. four quill and I'm going to just create my nice little puddle of pigment here adding water I'm looking for because it's fresh pigment uh, it's quite sticky I need to add enough water so that it has kind of an inky inky juicy consistency and I think that looks pretty good and uh, as my as I've been mixing paint, the water continues to absorb and evaporate over here. And I actually think I'm going to go over it one more time with clear water before I paint. Because the sides dry faster than the center. And actually you can see that in how the paper buckles. That water is pooling around the center. So even if I just went around the edges, that would probably help. But I'm going to go straight across with my damp brush. I just wet it and give it a little shake to drop off any excess moisture. Wet the whole paper again, and this time I'm going to tilt it and let any excess moisture run to the end, and then I'm going to swipe up that bead again. Preparation is really key in getting an even flat wash. If you've prepared properly, it's going to just flow that much more smoothly. That means having your paint ready and making sure your paper is at the right amount of moisture. And as you can see, it's still nice and shiny. And that's what I want. So now I'm going to try to fill this paper, and I'm going to try and do it quickly. As you can see, that pigment just swoops across the page. I'm going back and forth. When you have a lot of moisture like this, this is what helps prevent streaks, because right now it looks a little bit streaky. 
but as there's lots of moisture here, I also have flow, I have movement. The more water on your paper, the more the pigment's going to move. You don't want it to move so much it runs off the paper, but you want it to move enough that the, those lines, the, brush, the lines that your brush makes as it sweeps across the paper, are going to bleed together. Okay, now, that looks pretty even. There's a couple of things I need to watch for as I let this dry. One is that the paper has buckled slightly, and with watercolor, you're painting with water and paper, the paper's just going to buckle a little bit. And uh, the better quality papers buckle less than the cheaper ones. With arches, you're still going to get a little bit of buckling. So I'm going to use gravity to help me. I've got this roll of masking tape and I often use this just to tilt my board a little bit. That gives me enough of an angle so that excess moisture will flow down to the edge of the paper rather than pooling here in this buckle. And this will, having it tilted at this angle will let all that excess, any excess moisture flow to the edge rather than falling into this buckle where it would stay if my paper, if my board was flat. And uh, as it's drying, I don't just walk away. I stay close by until it starts to lose its shine. And I, that means then I can watch for any excess moisture that flows to the bottom and blot it up with my paper towel so it doesn't sit here on the edge and then push back in and create a bloom around the edges. Uh, a couple things you want to look for in creating a nice flat wash. One is the, pa the paint you choose is going to f be a factor as well. Some paint will granulate, that is, it'll create texture as it dries. And I might even get a little bit of that in the manganese blue. I'm on rough paper, so some of those little uh, granules of pigment settle into the texture of the paper and give you this lovely textured effect, but it should still look nice and even. I'm actually going to tilt a little bit more right up against my water containers here because I'm still feeling like this buckle could become a problem if I don't give that uh, moisture a new place to move to. And again, just blotting. This almost seems like a natural channel for the pigment to flow, so I want to just give it that chance to flow naturally. So I'm compensating for what the paper is doing as it dries. Uh, so yeah, the pigment you use is going to make a difference, the paper quality you use, and then how moist the paper is. So these are all things you need to watch for as you, get, uh, as you practice creating an even flat wash. And it will take time to learn and develop your skill in creating a, a smooth, even flat wash. Uh, one thing practicing your flat washes will do is it'll give you a whole new admiration for those artists who use them so skillfully in their paintings. You can have every confidence that as you practice your skills in watercolor and master these techniques that you will be able to successfully create the effects you're looking for for your painting. This lesson today is courtesy of World Watercolor Month and my Great Big Watercolor Summer Challenge. If you don't know about it already, I'm giving away uh, hundreds of dollars in prizes on my website at learn.angelafair.com. Challenge group members can participate in weekly challenges and be entered to win further prizes. And it's all to just to spend a little time enjoying watercolor this summer uh, and celebrate World Watercolor Month together. So check that out. You can click on the video description below this video or the info, uh, little info eye uh, circle up in the top right corner of the screen. And that will take you to the main challenge page where you can join in the Watercolor Summer Challenge.